Well, it got worse. I wish I could quit saying that this week, but man, the contagion from FTX just keeps on spreading. This time it hit one of Bitcoin's biggest OTC and lending desks. We're gonna dive into that story in this video. And man, what a crazy week it has been. I really feel like this is the vibe right now for cryptocurrency investors. Everyone comes in all bright, bright eyed and bushy tailed and then holy cow, the chaos begins. And before you know it, we enter the dark, dark winter of savagery, which is the bear market. Now I wanna talk about this story today and this is about Genesis. Now you may have never even heard of Genesis, but Genesis has a, been a big player quietly in the background doing really big stuff. They are a subsidiary of the Digital Currency Group, which own Coindesk, as well as the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which has like, you know, a couple hundred thousand Bitcoin sitting in it. Now, Genesis has halted withdrawals. And I wanna make this really clear here. Genesis and Grayscale are different companies. They are uh, subsidiary companies of the Digital Currency Group. I know there's already been some fears running around that, well, they're gonna have to start selling off the Grayscale Bitcoin and stuff like that. I really don't think that is the likely scenario here, but if we do see any kind of contagion across these companies, well, that could of course lead to trouble, but definitely this is a story that is just crazy because Genesis is a damn big player. They're the biggest desk for over-the-counter trading for Bitcoin. So when institutions and whales and stuff like this want to buy OTC, they were going to Genesis because it was a trusted name. It was a subsidiary of the Digital Currency Group. It was also a massive lender in crypto. And this is where part of the big problem comes in because a lot of exchanges were using Genesis for their earn programs. So we have, you know, whales, family offices, all these kind of players who could have been hit by this, right? So if you're a family office and you have 10,000 Bitcoin, you don't go and put your money on BlockFi, right? You go straight to someone like Genesis and say, hey, I would like to earn some money on this Bitcoin here. Can you help out? And Genesis will say, yeah, we got you. We're going to help out with that. Well, these guys have been affected by the FTX contagion as well as the Gemini exchange. So Gemini exchange, they're still operating their regular exchange service normally. So we are seeing uh, deposits, withdrawals still being processed normally. However, anybody who had money in Gemini's earn program, that is halted and there is a very big uncertainty about whether or not those people will ever get their money back. So this is a developing story, obviously. But Genesis is a company that deals billions in volume, right? Massive amounts of volume, massive amounts of money locked up in their earn program. And the thing is, is that Genesis has run into trouble before. Genesis actually got bailed out to the tune of $1.2 billion following the Three Arrows capital collapse because they actually had $2.4 billion, I think, at the time exposure to them. And so the digital currency group had to come in and fill in that $1.2 billion hole that Genesis itself could not cover. They've already had a bailout this year and they may need a second bailout now because that FTX exposure has wiped them out pretty damn hard. So we don't know the entire extent of everything yet, but it's probably not damn good is my guess here. And you know, the thing is, when whales like this explode, everybody gets covered in rotten guts. This is, uh, this is the reality of what happens when giant players like Genesis go down because they're a big liquidity provider, a big OTC market, a big earn market. And they are, they are falling from the FTX contagion. Now the FTX contagion has spread very wide and far at this point. So Genesis, as we've just discussed, this is the newest, biggest link to fall. And look, I want to be really clear about Genesis. Genesis is a damn big player. They themselves could cause contagion effects elsewhere. They already have it, Gemini. How many other exchanges are exposed to the downfall of Genesis? How many family offices, institutions, et cetera, et cetera? We don't know all the uh, secondary effects yet from this. Could this bring down another major fund, which will then have more secondary market effects? We don't know yet, right? Remember, all these are centralized institutions. Their books are opaque. We don't know exactly what is going on 
in these places and who owes money to who, who, where, what the debt's like, what the loan books are like. We don't have access to that information. BlockFi, unfortunately, looks like they are filing for bankruptcy, which sucks. You know, it, it's crazy. Ba BlockFi went from being this great lending platform to taking way too many risks with people's money, and now there they go. There they go. I mean, I, look, I haven't promoted BlockFi in a while, but if you, you know, you got into BlockFi because of me and your money got stuck there, then I'm sorry. It sucks. I've been out of BlockFi for a while now. I've been telling people to get their money out of these centralized lenders for a while now. And look, BlockFi seemed to kind of be okay after they got the, the bailout from FTX, but I think trusting any of these organizations after we saw what happened with Celsius, it's been playing with fire all year. Of course, the Voyager deal, that's another centralized lender. Uh, they, they were getting bailed out by FTX. That's obviously off the table now. Salt Lending, very small player, but they're, they're done for. FTX had bought them out. They're done for now. Liquid Exchange, FTX had bought them out. They're done for. The Icky Guy Hedge Fund, they're done for. Uh, Multicoin Capital, I think, is another hedge fund. They didn't get completely wiped out, but I think they had a 55% balance sheet reduction which is crushing beyond belief, right? And dozens of shit coins, which we ha probably haven't even seen really the fallout from that yet. And look, a lot of these things are low market cap things when they disappear. You know, the market's not exactly gonna care too much about it, but my suspicion is that we have dozens, if not more, of different shit coins and low cap altcoins, which may not be all that bad themselves, but they trusted the wrong people. They trusted FTX to do their treasury for them, and their money's gone. They're bankrupt, but they just haven't admitted it yet. So we have had a couple like Star Atlas come out and say they lost half of their treasury in FTX, but they still have the other half, which is obviously good for them. But I think we're going to see a lot of companies coming out in the next couple of weeks saying, yeah, guys, we got hit. Unfortunately, they're not telling their communities now, but I've got the suspicion we're going to hear quite a few people uh, saying that they lost their money on FTX. A lot of companies saying they lost their money on FTX. Silver lining of all this crisis is that a lot of exchanges are now rushing to release their reserve wallets. Bybit, of course, is uh, one of those that is doing that. Kraken's been doing this for quite a while. Um, but we were seeing others like Femex and Bybit and Binance coming forward and saying, look, we're going to do releasing our wallet addresses and we're all working on getting Merkle proofs for our wallets so that everybody can know transparently we've got your money because this is the big problem with FTX. They didn't have everyone's money. They were gambling with user funds. So this is really important here that we actually get this from exchanges. So like I said, silver lining, if the end result of all this insanity is that we do get good transparency from the industry's top exchanges, that would actually end up being kind of a win. Now, before we take a quick look at the charts here, just a quick note that if you're not signed up to Wealth Master yet, you got to get yourself signed up. We talk every week about altcoin alpha, airdrops, test nets, NFTs, DeFi tutorials, and much more. Join our 50,000 weekly readers by signing up for free using the link down below in the description. Now, real quick, let's dive into the charts. We can see the dollar index has bounced off of the 200-day exponential moving average. Now, that would be a very key area for it to bounce, major area, of course, of support. If that holds up, we could see a new rally forming up here for the dollar. What we really want to see to say, hey, the dollar's done and risk assets are going to really have a boom here is for this to fall under the 200-day exponential moving average. Stocks have been a bit iffy the past few days. And I think the main thing to point out here with stocks is that until we break above this orange line, everything is just a bear market rally. This whole move here for the S&P 500 from 3,500 up to 4,000, bear market rally. Great bear market rally, but bear market rally nevertheless, right? So until we crack above this, which probably is going to require some kind of more indication from the Federal Reserve that a pivot is actually underway. Well, until that happens, don't count chickens before they hatch too fast, right? Ethereum here, taking a look at the four hour view, we have broken down a little bit on this uptrend here, potentially coming in for a bearish retest. What we want to see is the price closing back above 1250 to invalidate that bearish retest 
thesis. Otherwise, if we just come back up to about 1230, 1240, well, we could see further downside here for Ethereum. So watching for that to come back up above and then, of course, to try to reclaim some of these exponential moving average lines. Now, let's talk real quick about Bitcoin here. Bitcoin right now forming up in this big triangle right here. So volatility is kind of falling off. We can see the price curling up, getting tighter and tighter as we go through. Volume falling off here as well, meaning we are getting ready likely for a potentially dramatic move in either direction, right? These kinds of triangles don't tend to give us the best indication of where the price might go. It's a symmetrical triangle. However, we could look at this as a bearish continuation pattern coming off of such a major sell-off like that. So we shall see, of course, if this Genesis story starts to pick up steam. Maybe that's enough to spook the markets and to send the prices down lower here in the markets as a breakdown. Obviously, we're all hoping that 15,700 was the low point and that we're going to start slowly building up and recovering. However, we still have a lot of variables in the market, a lot of unknowns in the market because of what is going on with this continual ricocheting contagion that we are seeing playing out in markets right now. But I think the break out of this range could be relatively dramatic when we see it happen. That triangle, by the way, will terminate around the weekend. So we should know our answer relatively soon to how the market is going to play this out. Okay, that's it. Subscribe now and see you next time.